Uh, I have this material from a paper which John Frame wrote. The title is The Problem of Theological Paradox. That's the title of Frame's paper. And you will find it in Foundations of Christian Scholarship, edited by Gary North, published by Ross House Books. Uh, here is the trouble. I hope you won't be too confused, but I'm pretty sure you'll be confused somewhat. Uh, as you know, Van Til has written a number of books. Well, then uh, Frame comes along and explains uh, certain important points in Van Til. So we have Van Til, then we have Frame's interpretation of Van Til, and then there are my remarks about Frame. And if you can keep the three people separate, you may be able to get through this, but, uh, well, anyhow, we'll begin. Uh, I, I think you can, if you listen, you can tell when I quote Van Til and when I quote Frame and when I give my own opinions. But remember, there are three people in view. <clears throat> well, uh, Frame, uh, near the beginning of his paper, remarks that Van Til does not merely paraphrase Dutch theologians. His apologetic position is unique and has been of substantial importance. Now, that frames opinion of Van Til, a commendatory opinion, and he says that Van Til has added things to the Dutch views, and uh, these are of substantial importance. Now, a quotation from Frame. Uh, his major complaints, by his, Frame means Van Til, his major complaints against competing apologetic methods are that they compromise the incomprehensibility of God. Uh, make a little remark there. Uh, as you know, there has been a rather a theological upheaval at Westminster in the recent past over Professor Shepherd, And uh, I have read some of the published material, and uh, the, the actual doctrine which is under discussion with Dr. Shepherd is the doctrine of justification by faith, but those who are opposing him have tried to tie this in with the doctrine of the incomprehensibility of God. I think this is one of their pet themes at Westminster, and they drag it in whenever they think they can even though it doesn't have much bearing on the subject matter. And uh, the frame, uh, <coughs> frame reports what Van Til says, and it's very accurate. His major complaint against competing apologetic methods are that they compromise the incomprehensibility of God. Now, uh, when you get into a, a discussion... I was going to say a brawl like this. Uh, please remember that I always insist on your defining your terms. Uh, Van Til doesn't always do so, and Frame does it less. Uh, you ought to realize that what Van Til means by incomprehensibility is not what Charles Hodge means by incomprehensibility. There are two very different views, different definitions, though I hate to say two different definitions because the Westminster people really don't define incomprehensibility, but they do explicitly reject Hodge's view. They don't use the term Hodge, but I mean they give his definition and say it's no good. So uh, there are complications, and if you want to learn the subject, you have to learn the complications. That's what the subject is. And if you don't want to learn the subject, won't well, go out and play golf. I don't know why anybody would want to do so, but apparently some do. Uh, uh, 
his major complaints against competing apologetic methods are that they compromise the incomprehensibility of God. Continuing the quotation from Frame, the difference between the two, uh, between, that is, apologetics and theology, uh, because the, the context here indicates that, the difference between apologetics and theology in practice, then, becomes a difference in emphasis rather than in subject matter. Uh, I think you will find out as we go on that uh, my opinion is that Frame dilutes Van Til. He seems not to grasp Van Til's exact position, and he sort of trivializes it. Now, that's my opinion. You don't have to take it, but at least it'll help you understand the way I develop this. Well, to, uh, to go on uh, with the next page of frame, the logic of his position, that is Van Til's position, the logic of his position requires us to go beyond his explicit teachings to say more than he himself says end of quote, and the frame proceeds to do so in one way or another. Since Van Til's theology is basically that of the Reformed tradition, frame will mainly discuss his distinctives. Incidentally, Van Til's theology, I suppose you could say mainly or basically that of the Reformed, but not, not very, not always quite the same thing. Uh, he has a view of the Trinity that no theologian that I know, no orthodox theologian that I know of has ever come up with at all. Uh, he holds that God is not only three persons in one substance, to use that horrible Latin word that doesn't mean anything. He holds that God is both three persons and one person. And he explicitly denounces the usual apologetic defending the doctrine of the Trinity, which is that God is three in one sense and one in another sense, and hence there is no contradiction because there are lots of things that are three in one sense and one in another. You can get all sorts of examples. The easiest one to think of is a business corporation that has the three officers, a president, a vice president, and a secretary treasurer. And here the corporation is one corporation, but three officers. And you can have one godhead and three persons, or all sorts of combinations where you have three and one, but in different senses. And that is the standard orthodox position all the way back from Athanasius. Van Til denounces this and says that the Trinity is both one person and three persons. And he calls this a paradox, which is putting it mildly. 